The reading this morning is taken from Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Peace and joy. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace, in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in your suffering, our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope not, does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if when we were God's enemies we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. And we've also got a second reading this morning that is from Romans 12, verse 12. Love. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. This is the word of the Lord. And I ask Jill to come up now. Lord, we thank you for Jill. We thank you that she is willing to serve you, Lord. And we thank you that her heart was open to come to speak to us this morning. May our hearts be open to all she has to tell us. In your name, Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm putting my stopwatch on because I, I talk a lot, so that I make sure I don't go over. <laughs> um, but for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jill, Jill Peck, married to Matt, um, and we have a cat called Harley. And last October, I ran the Love Luton Half Marathon, something that was a big achievement. And I ran that for the charity that I work for called Signpost. For those of you that don't know what Signpost is, Signpost is a charity working with people who are homeless. And we provide temporary accommodation for up to two years for those people. It's a charity that serves anyone who is unable to secure appropriate housing needs. And as part of my role, I'm a service manager for community partnerships. So together, I work with a group of incredible volunteers. Some of them live with in Signpost. And we go out and we do loads of volunteering tasks around in the community, in Luton, in Dunstable, in Houghton Regis. And those things include litter picking, they include marshalling, and they include working in open green spaces. And it's a real privilege and an honour to do what I get to do. And I learn so much from the people that I work with who have different stories and different things that they've been through but have so much to offer and to give to community. Um, a little bit about me. So I became a Christian back when I was seven. Some of you probably remember me from over 20 years ago. So it's kind of like I'm back home so the Dust family, those of you that knew the Dust family, Simon Dust, who was the vicar here once upon a time, Hannah, his daughter, quickly became a friend of mine when they moved here. And Hannah invited me to come along to a Christmas party that was happening. I didn't really have much experience of church, but kind of went in the church house to this Christmas party. 
and quickly kind of thought, I want to go to this. So at the time, there was a children's alpha that was on. So I came along to the children's alpha, quickly from there went to New Wine, and for quite some time was then a part of the church family here. So it's lovely to be back because this is where my relationship with Christ began. So it's lovely to be here and seeing so many familiar faces today. Often people comment about my outgoingness, my bubbly personality, and my positive outlook on life. And I would agree with that to an extent because I do try and live life to the full. However, like many of us here today, my life has been full of some real highs and some extreme lows. And I'm sure that many of you can resonate with that, that life does have its highs, but actually it can have some real lows that can be really difficult. And so before I carry on, we're going to listen to a song. And this song has resonated with me for many years. So the lyrics are going to come up and just spend some time reflecting on the words. So you may have wondered why, why did I play that song as I began. Um, and it's because sometimes, sometimes life can feel dark. It can feel as though we're stuck in a storm. And it's impossible to see any light. And some of you maybe are sat here this morning and that is how you feel. And I want to say that's okay. If that's how you feel right now, that is okay. But I want you to know that there is still joy to be found. And sometimes we just have to stop and we just have to look for it. And for me, I often notice the time where winter is starting to draw to a close when spring's getting ready to show its beautiful face. And in life, sometimes it just feels like we're stuck in winter. We don't know how we're going to get out of winter. It just feels like that's all we can see. But actually, even when it feels like the darkness is taking over, and even when it feels like we're lost and we're trapped, it doesn't matter how much darkness there is, because there is always a glimmer of light. Always. And it doesn't matter how small the light is because darkness will never win. And sometimes, and maybe today you're this person, sometimes life feels like it's bright and it's shining and everything is exactly how it should be. And during that moment, it's easy. It's easy to put our hands in the air and worship God to be full of praise, and to tell everyone just how blessed we are, to tell everyone how great life is and how good God is. Yet if I'm being really honest, I wonder in those times when it feels like life has reached its deepest, deepest, darkest despair, I wonder if you can truly say that you choose to still say, I am blessed that God is good and he is faithful. And I know for one, that's as much of a challenge for me as it is for you. But I stand here today and I truly believe that our God is good and he is faithful. And so my thoughts for today and what I feel God's put on my heart is this particular sentence. How do you carry on in the desert place and yet still find joy in the darkest of nights. So when Wendy invited me to come and speak, I asked God, what shall I speak on? And straight away, that sentence came to me. How do you carry on in the desert place, and yet still find joy in the darkest of nights? And so I prayed about it. I asked God, what did that mean? And I'm going to share what he's put on my heart. And before I start, I truly believe that it's going to resonate with people. And I believe there could be tears today, and that is okay, because God wants to release you from things that maybe are difficult. And that may not be something that's been difficult in the last week. That may be something that's years old, that's buried deep. But I truly believe that God wants to release you and meet with you today. So at times, it can be difficult to stop and rest. We may think we've got superpowers, surviving on little sleep, always being on the go, 
rushing from here to there. And we may feel that when we are on the mountaintop, we can hold our hands high. But when we're in the valley, maybe we can't see any joy that surrounds. We may feel that God's favor is evidently on other people, but maybe sometimes we feel he's forgotten us. But I want to remind you today, I want to tell you, each and every one of you, that God loves you. God cares about each individual sat in this room. He doesn't care about Jane more than he cares about Matt. He cares equally about each and every one of you. And that takes me to my first point from Isaiah, that God cares. God has lost track of me. He doesn't care what happens to me. Don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? God does not come and go. God lasts. And that's from Isaiah 40, 27. And so often at times, maybe when we are in that desert place, we do feel like God has forgotten about us. Maybe we feel like he doesn't care. Maybe we question why are bad things happening. Maybe we feel sometimes like we've been abandoned by God. Life doesn't seem fair. Yet, in the Bible, we are told about those who have endured trials and suffering, and God remains faithful to them. God doesn't come and go, friends. God lasts. In life, we can face all sorts. Maybe at times we feel isolated or lonely. Maybe we question why certain things have happened. And maybe you're sitting here today and you're asking, why have certain things happened? And I can tell you I've been in that place and still at points am in that place. Yet I know that God cares. And although we may not understand and we may not have all the answers, we are promised that God remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. And just like it says in our first reading, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they can help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confidence of hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. I love this piece of scripture. And my husband will be the first to tell you I am not the most patient person. I really am not the most patient person. We often joke in our house that patience is a virtue because I'm not very patient. But actually... When I reflect on this scripture and I stop and I look at it, I'm reminded that when we do face problems or when we are having trials, that actually they develop our character. And there is a time for everything and he has made everything beautiful in his time. The piece here that's right here behind us, he has made everything beautiful in his time. And there is a season of life, we go through different seasons and they contribute to who we are. But God truly loves us, and those who have our hope in God will not be disappointed. And God knows everything. There can be points where we wonder, God, are you there? But God knows everything. He knows exactly what it is that's on our hearts. He is the creator of all we can see. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't pause to catch his breath. He knows everything. I wonder if you have ever had someone ask you how you are. Maybe this morning in church you forked him, and maybe you're feeling pretty rubbish today. And I'm not going to ask who is, but there could be people here that are feeling pretty rubbish. And someone's asked you, hey, how are you? And your response is, I'm fine, or I'm okay, or I'm just tired. And I do that sometimes. And I used to be a youth worker. And I remember many years ago working with a young person, and I shared this as part of being a youth worker, and said, oh, I'm so often that person that will just be like, I'm fine, or I'm good, or yeah, everything's okay. And this young person used to, every time she saw me after I'd say it, look me in the face and be like, how are you really? How are you really? And I thought, oh, I wish I'd never said anything. But actually, it's true. How often do we truly tell people how we are? 
And that's a challenge because I do it, and I'm sure a lot of you do it, that sometimes we will just say, I'm fine, or I'm good, or I'm okay. And actually, sometimes that's the last thing you feel. But God knows how you feel. Even if nobody else, the person next to you might think you're great, and that's not how you feel. But God, God knows how you feel. And we need to let our guard down, and we need to be real, and we need to be honest, and we need to be vulnerable. And we need to let God in. We were created in our mother's womb. We were knitted together. He knows how many hairs are on our heads. And I know for me, when I feel stressed or when I feel anxious, God speaks to me massively through creation. Whether that be a beautiful sunset or a flower or the sun shining so brightly, our creator, our king, who has created these things that so often I take for granted, uses them in my time of need. It's his small, silent whisper to tell me, Jill, I'm there. And he speaks to me through creation. And I wonder for each of you here today, how does God speak to you? How does God tell you that he's there? And actually, do you always notice I can remember, again, a few years ago, somebody said, I always see the big blessings, but I miss the everyday blessings. Do you notice the everyday blessings? And how often do you tell God what you need? And more importantly, how often do you listen to what God is telling you? Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. When was the last time that you were still? When was the last time that whether you were in the mountaintop or the valley, that you were still and you sat with God and you listened to what he was saying? And when was the last time that you prayed about the problem that you're facing before you spoke to somebody else about it? And that challenges me because I don't do that very often. I often will talk about my problem before I pray about it. But actually, when was the last time that you prayed about your problem before you shared it with somebody else? Because God knows our hearts, and it's important we come to him, whether we're in the desert place or the mountaintop, that we come to God and know that he is good. And in those desert times, I want you to know, I want to remind you that Jesus died on that cross for you and for me. That he loves you no matter what your circumstances. And he wants you to come to him and lean on him and give your request to him. And he wants you to find rest in him. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. We've just had that in our scripture. And from Isaiah, he energizes those who get tired, gives fresh strength to drop out. For even young people tire and drop out. Young folk in their prime stumble and fall. And I don't know about you, but I've experienced times in my life where I don't know where I'm going to find the strength to keep on going. And I'm not talking about keep on going for a week. I'm talking about how am I going to get through the next hour or the next day. And there's been several of those times. But back in 2009, so 10 years ago, when I was 19, I was a youth worker at the time, and I thought I was superwoman. I thought that I could just keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. And it's actually backfired on me. I ended up being signed off work with extreme fatigue and anxiety. And at 19... I thought I was meant to be this person that had the whole world to face and I could do it and everything was going to be great. Yet all of a sudden I didn't know where I was going to get my next piece of energy from. But this verse gave me comfort to know that God energizes those who get tired. God wants to energize you today. And I don't just mean physical tiredness. I mean emotional tiredness, mental tiredness. Today is the last day of um, Mental Health Awareness Week, and we can experience tiredness in many different ways. Yet, actually, I knew that I needed to find my rest in God, and I knew that it was okay. I learned to know that it was okay to say no sometimes. I'm that yes person. I will say yes to so much stuff, and I can see people nodding, 
And I'll say, yes, 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 yes. And the only person it backfires on is me. And the Bible tells us, let our yes be yes and our no be no. And it can be so easy to say yes to absolutely everything. But then we get tired and maybe we can't do things efficiently. And actually, we're all part of the body of Christ. We've all got different skills and talents and things to offer to make up that body. We're all human. We all have times of difficulty. Yet we need not to beat ourselves up. We need to find rest in God, having times of daily reflection and letting God renew our strength. For those of you that drive, if you were to let your car get down to the absolute reserve of your petrol, it wouldn't get very far. And I've done that before where I think, how many miles is this car going to get me till I can get to a petrol station? But actually soon they would stop and they would no longer work. And it's a bit like us. We need to find those things that energize us to fill up our petrol tank, to keep us fueled, to keep us going, to be able to do what God has called us to do. And even when we're in that desert place, there's still things that God wants us to do. He still wants to meet with us. He still wants us to know that he is there. And when you come out of that desert place, he'll use those times. That story I shared when I was 19, I remember turning around to my mum and saying, why is this happening? And she didn't have the answers to why it was happening. But she said, one day God's going to use that. And she was right. I went on to be an emotional well-being specialist for a couple of years at Youthscape. And I understood all of a sudden about mental health. And actually God used those experiences. Would I have liked to have not gone through them? Yes. But I did. And same with many other things that have happened in life but I still believe God will use those experiences. So we need to discover what it is that fills us. And we also need to know what it is that drains us so that we can spend that time refueling. Because so often we keep going until we run out of fuel and then maybe we experience burnout or maybe we find ourselves in that desert place that we didn't want to be in. So what is it that fuels you? What is it that keeps you going? And we need to become self-aware recognizing what drains us. And I know for me that, that I like listening to other people. I enjoy listening to people and I enjoy helping people. But I also know it gets to a point where actually that can begin to drain my energy, particularly if I'm struggling myself with things. And so at that point, you need to ask yourself, actually, what do I need to do to refuel myself? And so some of those things I'll do will be spending time with friends. And I've got friends that have come to support me today and it'll be spending time with them. Or actually turning and saying, you know what, I'm not doing all right at the minute. And I'm looking at Abby because I do it to Abby all the time. Abby's one of my best friends and I do it to Abby all the time. I will say, actually, you know what, I'm not okay or I'm struggling or Abby, I'm really good. And I know that there's someone there to bounce that off. Who is the person that you could turn to when you've prayed but also to say, can you support me? I'm struggling. Who's that person for you? And we need to tell God what we need. But those who wait upon God get fresh strength. They spread their wings and they soar like eagles. They run and they don't get tired. They walk and they don't lag behind. We need to be open to telling God what it is we need. I don't know about you, but sometimes I find it really difficult to understand my own emotions, yet alone explain them. And actually, that's okay. I just say to God, I don't know how I feel right now. I don't know how to put this into words or articulate it, but you know how I feel, and I need you to meet me right now where I'm at. And that's okay, because it's difficult when all your emotions begin to merge into one, and you can't pinpoint what you feel but you just need to be kind to yourself when you're in that desert place. You need to be kind to yourself and you need to know that joy can still be found in that desert place. And I've began to understand over the years, and it's taken me years, but I've began to understand that it's important to accept that it's okay to sometimes not be okay. And that has taken me a long time to be able to even stand here and say, 
that it's okay to not always be okay. God knows how we feel. He knows what we need. And we just need to be honest and real with God, even when it's tough. And we need to find out what it is that works for us. I find when things begin to build up that I can feel angry. And I stand here today and be honest. There are points when I have been angry at God. There are points when I have been angry at God, not because it's God's fault, but because I've not understood why stuff has happened. And I stand here and say that because it's important. And sometimes we can't make sense of situations. And sometimes we are left confused about why things have happened the way they have. And we may never, ever have those answers, but God still remains faithful. So often I will try and ignore how I feel when I'm not feeling great. Maybe I won't always talk to God. And then my joy, that joy that I said still exists, sometimes will get robbed. And things begin to feel bigger and bigger and bigger. But I found that during those times, that's when we've got to stop. That's when we've got to stop and look those dark times in the face. And tell God if we're angry, or tell God if we're confused, or tell God if we're hurting, or tell God if we feel alone. And we may ask God why things have happened how they have. And actually we may, like I say, never have those answers. But God loves us. That cross right there, he died for all of us. And actually, as I begin to tell God how I'm feeling... I find a sense of relief can come over me. It doesn't mean those dark times go. It doesn't mean those battles stop. But I find that as I invite God in, those actual sense of relief can come. What is it today that you need to invite God into? It's important that when we tell God how we feel, when we read our Bibles, when we begin to pray, when we're in fellowship with other people, And when we begin to process things, that we know that God knows our needs and he's put other people alongside us as well to walk those journeys with us. As I mentioned earlier, I struggled for a long time with extreme anxiety and there are still points when I will have very anxious moments that can last from a few minutes to longer. But actually I had to learn how to begin to address that. I had to learn not to be afraid of it and not to fear it but to sit with it. And it's a brave thing to do, but this quote I love, sometimes the smallest step in the right direction ends up in the biggest step of your life. Tiptoe if you must, but take the step. Sometimes the smallest step in the right direction ends up being the biggest step of your life. Tiptoe if you must, but take the step. I began to talk to others about how I was really feeling. Instead of telling everyone I was fine and everything was good, I began to share with people how I really felt. But more importantly than that, I began to tell God. And I was terrified of telling people how I felt. And I was terrified of telling God how I really felt. But actually, as I began to let my guard down, there was a huge sense of relief that others knew how I felt. And I soon learned that I wasn't alone and others have shared experiences. And whatever that desert place that you be in, no two people will experience that exactly the same, even if it's similar to someone else's experience. But take comfort in knowing that you're not on your own. That as you share with other people, someone might say, me too. And you find that common ground, and you sit together, and maybe you cry together, and maybe you pray together. But God will meet you. And God put people around me that I needed. And all of a sudden, I realized there were people that cared and people that wanted to be alongside me. And I had to take small steps, one step at a time. But each step took me into the right direction of positively expressing my emotions. We are all on a journey. Every single one of us sat here today is on a journey. And whether your journey today be that you feel on top of the world, or whether your journey today be that you feel that you're at rock bottom, we are all on a journey. 
we're all running a race, forgetting what is behind and pressing on to reach the goal. But in the times we tire, let us remember that God cares. He knows everything. We need to find rest in him and tell him what we need. And let us build one another up. Take each other by the hand and encourage each other on the race that we are on. And as, as I prepared this, I believe that there are people here today that are hurting. And it may be a recent hurt, or actually it may be something that you've buried deep within that is years and years and years old. And sometimes maybe you try and forget whatever that thing is, and you find that it surfaces, and you don't want to address it, and you hope it will go away. But for whatever reason, every so often it shows its face. And it's robbing your joy. And actually, every so often when it shows its face and that rawness comes, it feels like it's a deep stabbing within your heart. And today, friends, I believe that God wants you to find your joy again. I believe that God wants to show you how much he loves you. That even in the darkest of nights, he wants you to know that he is there. He wants to come and meet with you. Allow that pain to freely flow, however it needs to flow. Don't be embarrassed or ashamed. Let it out in whatever way you need to. Because God created you in your mother's womb. He knows you by name. He knew you by name before you were even here on this earth. And he loves you. You are not a mistake. You are his child and his arms are wide open for you to run into again. He is the light of the world. Whatever the darkness, whatever surrounds, there is always light and joy to be found. And so as we come to the end of me talking, I've got some questions that I want you to think about. And then I'll explain what the candle was for on your chair. So I want you to think about what is it that's draining you if you're feeling drained? What is it that's making you feel drained if you're feeling drained? How do you need to start refueling your petrol tank? What do you need to do to refuel your petrol tank? And what do you need to ask God for? And for those of you sitting here today that don't feel like you're in the desert, you feel like you're on the mountaintop, then just like our second reading, when God's people are in need, be ready to help them. So who is it that you can go and help? Who is it that you can go and stand alongside? I'm going to pray and then I'm going to invite us to respond. Dear God, I want to pray that you would just um, meet with us. That God, if you've stirred people's hearts, that you would help for them to respond accordingly. God, I want to pray that this be a safe space where people can respond to whatever it is that you've been saying to them. God, I thank you that you are good no matter what our circumstances. I thank you that there is always light and joy to be found, even at times when it doesn't feel like it. And I want to pray today that, that you would release people from, from anything that's been buried deep within. That you would come and meet and this be the start of the healing process. So God, as we respond right now, I just want to pray that you come and meet with us. Amen. So in a minute, the band is going to sing a song that I felt God put on my heart to be the response. But as you've seen, you've got a tea light on your chair. And I was, at the start of the service, I planned to say, if you want to come and light your tea light, come and light your tea light. But actually, when we were praying this morning before the service, that didn't feel like that was the right thing for me to do. So you've got your tea light. And the reason why you've got a tea light is to openly claim that life is not always going to be easy. It's full of challenges. 
And maybe right now it's challenging for you, or maybe it's not. Maybe you're in the desert, or maybe you're on the mountaintop. But you can find joy in the darkness. There is always light there, even if only sometimes we see a flicker. So I'm going to invite you to take your candles home. And when it feels right and appropriate for you, light that candle and reflect on what I've said. But what I am going to invite you to do as the band responds is if you feel that you're that person that's stuck in that desert place, I'm going to invite you to come and kneel at the foot of this cross because God's arms are open wide and he wants to meet with you. Amen.